At Zendesk, our developer documentation is one of our most coveted resources. That's because it contains all the information you need for development with our products. Looking to make a call to our API, build an app, or set up an integration with a third-party service. Everything you need is right there. If you're new to Zendesk's products or maybe new to technical documentation, diving right into our docs can feel a bit overwhelming. Our goal as the developer advocacy team is to support developers like you not only learn how to use our products, but to make the development experience as seamless as possible. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what kind of info you can expect to find in our docs, how to find what it is you need, and share some of the best ways to use our search tool. The home for Zendesk's developer documentation can be found at developer.zendesk.com. You've probably seen our Help Center, which has plenty of helpful how-to articles and information about our products. However, in terms of our actual technical documentation, that can be found here in our developer docs. Let's take a moment to look at some of the first things you'll see and get a little familiar with the homepage itself. At the top, you'll find documentation and API reference. All of our developer docs are separated into these two main categories. Then of course, our search bar, which allows you to search throughout the entirety of the docs. On the left side menu, you'll see various sections organized by our different products, SDKs, and extensions, such as our apps framework. Now that we know where to find the developer docs, let's get into understanding what these sections and tools are that we've highlighted. So what's the difference between documentation and API reference? And what can you expect to find in them? Under documentation, you'll find getting started guides, a glossary of important terminology, as well as capabilities and restrictions for various products. Basically, if you're looking to learn the what and how, you can find it under documentation. Under API reference is, well, everything API related. All supported endpoints are listed, as well as example request and response bodies, and how to use these endpoints, such as required authentication, role restrictions, and API rate limits. Okay, let's test our knowledge so far by looking at a few Zendesk customer scenarios and determine which would be the best category to search under. Tipne is a web developer. He's familiar with using Zendesk products and has some experience making calls to our API. He would like to know if it's possible to get the comment data for a specific ticket. Which category would you suggest he look under to find this? If you thought API reference then, you're 100% right. Since Tipene is familiar with the products and has used our API, it's safe to say he probably just needs to look at our ticketing endpoints. This would verify that it is possible to get the comments, give them the exact endpoint to use, and showcase an example response body. Okay, that one was a little too easy. So let's try a bit more challenging scenario. Eric is a newly hired product manager at a hot startup. He noticed a lot of the questions coming in from customers were all the same few topics over and over again. He feels like there should be a way to automate handling some of these requests to provide a faster response time for customers and relieve some of the workload on their agents. Zendesk is new to Eric, but he knows the company currently only uses the support ticketing platform. He isn't sure whether Zendesk has anything that could help with this or if they would need to develop something on their own. He wanted to do some research before making suggestions to the team, but where would be the best place for him to start? If you thought documentation then, you were correct. Documentation would be the best place to start searching for the scenario. Okay, so there's a lot happening in this one. Let's try to break it down. 
there's a chance he would need to use both documentation and the API reference based on the solution they choose. However, being that Eric isn't as experienced with Zendesk, the best place for him to start would be the documentation. This would allow him to learn more about the capabilities of the product. He could learn about the Help Center, Web Widget, AnswerBot, and Knowledge Capture app, all of which can help meet their business needs. Since we now understand how to determine when to look under documentation or API reference, let's get into where to go next, in the menu bar. Whether you look under documentation or API reference, in the menu bar, you'll see sections sorted by our products, SDKs, and extensions to our platform. This makes it easy for you to already break down where to look based on the part of the product you're looking for. Once clicked, most of these sections have multiple subsections and tons of nested info, which is great, but can definitely get a little overwhelming. Next, we're going to take a look at what you could typically expect to find when looking under a product area. Let's say you're building your first Zendesk app. You know to look under documentation, scroll down to extensions, and select apps. Let's take a look at what you'll find. Under apps, we have an introduction page as well as seven subsections with nested pages of info. You'll notice that almost every section under documentation has an introduction and getting started info. This is great because it lays a basis of what exactly this thing is and gives you the fundamental steps to working with it. You can also expect to find glossaries or entire pages dedicated in the subsections to explaining different parts of the selected product. For example, in apps, under developer guide, you'll find this glossary. It has all the key terminology for our apps framework and the process of building Zendesk apps. Moving over to the menu bar under API reference, when a product area is clicked, you'll find subsections that contain API documentation organized by product-specific features and capabilities. To make navigating even more easier, once a section is chosen, such as tickets, you'll have a catalog of links on the right-hand side that quickly highlights what can be found on this page and help you get to what you're looking for faster. It's also important to note that many of our endpoints are very specific about the context in which they're used. Even if they may sound like they're doing the same operation, their actual responses and usage are quite different. For example, under list tickets, you'll find seven available endpoints. That may seem like a lot. However, by reading the documentation, you'll discover that each endpoint can return specific tickets based on what it is you're looking to do. Pretty neat, huh? So now that we know how to navigate Zendesk's developer docs, we're going to get into how to effectively search for what you need. Because time is important, let's cut down on time by using the search bar. I'm sure we're all familiar with how a search bar works, typing in keywords for whatever it is you're looking for with the expectation of relevant results. And our search bar does that. The search bar queries all of the docs but you'll see search results divided into our categories, documentation and API reference. By not knowing the difference between the two or by not being familiar with Zendesk products, you might not know which results are what you need. It's also important to note that the keywords you're using matter. Here's a common question developers may have. How to set up authentication? It's very tempting to just hop on the docs and type in authentication to see what comes up. However, when you do that, the first things you see might not be what you expect. That's because the results are sorted by the prevalence they have according to the context in which they're found. When we type in authentication and look under documentation, the first result returned is for a nested section under SDKs, specifically for the Unity native SDK. That's because there is an entire page dedicated to just authentication for this product area. Does that mean other product areas don't have information about authentication? No, it just means without a product or a feature specified, our search tool identifies this as the number one result. Since it's an entire page titled authentication and has its own section for the product it belongs to. 
So let's search again, but we'll be a little more specific this time. Authentication for live chat. You'll notice that we still have a few interesting results, but among them is OAuth authentication for live chat. Now, if we were even more specific and typed in OAuth authentication live chat, it would have been our first result. A lot of common technical terminology, such as authentication, is easily found throughout our documentation for various products and features. Let's review what are our key takeaways for search bar best practices. Know which category to search under. Documentation or API reference. Specifying which product or feature you're working with helps guarantee you get the most relevant results. Provide context. Even something as simple as clarifying OAuth or basic auth can really aid in getting you exactly what you need. By sticking to these best search practices, finding what you need should be a breeze. As extensive as our developer documentation is, you'll occasionally find links to additional documentation, such as with our mobile SDKs and with the Sunshine Conversations platform. Since these products tend to have more unique features, the linked additional documentation allows us to go more in depth with those products in a format that best suits its needs. On the main page, you'll also see highlighted some of the most popular developer content. Then at the bottom, there's a link to our developer community where you can ask questions and connect with our team, developer advocacy, as well as other developers in the community. Now that we're wizards at navigating the developer docs and sharpened our search skills, you're ready to tackle any bug, question, or just bringing to life your next Zendesk project. For questions, feedback, or to share an idea for other Zendesk-related developer content you'd like to see, feel free to share them in the comment section or join the conversation in our developer community. Until next time, happy coding, friends.